Hello, I'm Dr. Jean Mulcahy-Levy. I'm one of the pediatric neuro-oncologists at Children's Hospital Colorado. I'm one of the members of the Morgan Adams Foundation Pediatric Brain Tumor Program at the University of Colorado Anschutz campus. And today I'd like to take the opportunity to talk to you about low-grade gliomas. Low-grade gliomas can present in lots of different ways, whether you're taking care of a patient, as their doctor, or as their parent. This includes vomiting, headaches, and neurologic changes. Once you see a patient or your child with these symptoms, you often end up with an MRI and follow up with a pediatric neuro-oncologist like me. That may end up with a diagnosis of something called low-grade glioma. What is a low-grade glioma? How did it get there? And what are we going to do to treat it? Low-grade gliomas present with lots of different kinds of names. This includes pilocytic astrocytoma, the most common low-grade glioma in pediatric patients. There's also things such as optic pathway gliomas, which can affect vision. Low-grade gliomas with more exotic names like pleomorphic xanthroastrocytomas, or PXAs, pilomyxoid astrocytomas, or gangliogliomas. There's also tumors known as DNETs, or dysembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumors. These are tumors often associated with seizures. All of these tumors present in different ways, but fall up into the same pathway. So with all of the research that's been done on low-grade gliomas, we now understand that this kind of tumor is a single pathway disease. And what that means is that there's one pathway that's driving all of these tumors. And so just to teach you a little bit about that, I wanna start with an explanation of the pathway itself. So there's a protein called RAS, and this is what we think of as a master regulator protein. This protein sends signals down and to other proteins to tell it to grow. So for the next signal in this pathway, it goes from RAS to BRAF. Then it sends a nice controlled signal down to something called MEC. And this goes down to something called ERK. Now all of these proteins together working down this pathway in a nice orderly fashion controlled by RAS create a normal cell and create it to grow. What happens when you don't have the RAS signaling? If you lose your master regulator signal because the proteins below it have a mutation or a change in it that cause it to signal by itself, in this case you're seeing BRAF with either a BRAF V600E mutation or a KIAA1549 fusion, the two most common changes we see, all of a sudden, BRAF is signaling, as you can see, by itself with nobody controlling it. This goes down to the MEC protein, which only does what it's being told to do, and it continues to send a whole bunch of signals down to the ERK protein, again, doing what it's told to do and telling the cells to grow. And in the end, this is what causes the cancer cells to grow. And the tumor's signaling pathway is all changed and disordered, and we have to figure out ways to get these cells to stop growing. So now what do we do? When we think about our treatment options for kids with these tumors, we want to think first about surgery. So the most important thing is to remove as much of the tumor as you safely can. And this is a discussion that you have with your neurosurgery and your neuro-oncology team. The next typical therapy that we think of is chemotherapy, and this is the standard medicines that people think about. Chemotherapy works by killing cells that are growing fast. In this case, the cells that are being signaled by ERK to grow when they really shouldn't be signaling. The other major thing that's come up in recent years is targeted therapy. This is the most exciting portion of low-grade gliomas where new medications that target the pathway specifically, such as BRAF inhibitors and MEK inhibitors, as well as a number of other inhibitors that are being developed over time. And this therapy is oral, can be given without IVs, the one downside would be that the therapy can last up to two years. Finally, there's some patients that eventually need radiation. This is focused x-rays that are used to treat the tumor cells that are growing, but is typically a last choice in low-grade gliomas. So what are you gonna do to choose which therapy is best for your child? So here I just wanted to show a couple of questions that you might wanna ask your neuro-oncologist. So what kind of low-grade glioma does my child have? What kind of genetic changes does my child's tumor have? Can surgery remove the whole tumor? And if it does, do I need any other treatment after that? Will my child need any other therapy? And finally, which is gonna be the best treatment, chemotherapy or targeted therapy? 
you want to make sure that this is a good discussion you have with your doctor because there's clinical trials comparing the two to try and figure out which is the best therapy. We're still working that out with science and clinical research. You should also talk about the short and long-term effects of each option. There may be some choices in there that are specific to your child that um, will mean that you choose one or the other. And finally, talk about the length of time for each treatment. We know that chemotherapy lasts approximately a year and the targeted therapy currently lasts sometimes two years and even more. Overall, your doctor and you will make the best choice for your child based on the information that you have on your child, the tumor, and your family. There's a lot of parent resources out there that I want to share with you. These are just a couple. The Morgan Adams Foundation, locally here in Denver, as well as national. There's also Facebook groups. This is one here that is specific to low-grade gliomas. There's also the um, PLGA, which is the Pediatric Low-Grade Glioma Association, which has a very good resource for parents. And the most important resource is your treatment team. They can also connect you with more information and resources as you need them. So I wanted to take a moment to thank you for allowing me to talk to you a little bit about low-grade glioma. If you have any questions about your child, their diagnosis, or anything else that we can help with, please don't hesitate to contact us at the information shown below. Thank you.